As April comes to an end, a misleading aura envelopes Bitcoin BTC, captivating the public with enticing narratives of the imminent halving. And this event is often depicted as a lucrative opportunity, yet the truth harbors a much darker essence. Our objective is to unveil the halving as a critical juncture for BTC, a time that demands an urgent and potentially calamitous price surge to prevent its collapse. In a remarkable divergence, BSV presents a resilient and authentic roadmap, true to Satoshi Nakamoto's initial blueprint for Bitcoin as practical digital money for all. Bitcoin miners secure their income in two ways. Number one, they earn the mining subsidy granted by the Bitcoin network for validating transactions. And number two, collecting transaction fees. Every 10 minutes, the network compensates miners who have successfully grouped recent Bitcoin transactions into a data block, which then becomes part of the blockchain. And the blockchain is the comprehensive ledger of all Bitcoin transactions since inception. This mining subsidy was initiated in 2009 and it was worth 50 Bitcoins. And every four years, this figure is halved. And that's why they call it halving. And the very first time that it happened was in November 2012, when the reward or the subsidy decreased from 50 Bitcoins to 25 Bitcoins. And then four years later, in July 2016, this 25 Bitcoins reduced to 12.5. And then in May 2020, it reduced again to 6.25 Bitcoins. And this April, it's going to reduce to 3.125 Bitcoins only. Let's just pause here for a minute and just think about this a little bit further. Let's assume that the halving happens and nothing else changes. What are the mathematics like? If BTC miners are going to be missing out on 3.125 BTCs, and each BTC is roughly, say, 70,000, that's been the latest peak so far, that's about $218,750 that they're going to be missing out every 10 minutes. If a miner loses out on $218,000, how are they going to make that up to ensure that they are continuing to pay their operational expenses? One way you would say is that they can make it up via transaction costs. So if you are going to make it up via transaction costs, then let's consider that with BTC, they can only process seven transactions per second maximum times 60 seconds to make up a minute. 7 times 60 times 10 minutes. In a 10-minute block, there's about 4,200 transactions per 10 minutes. So to make 218,750 out of 4,200, they will need to be charging at least $52 more than the transaction fees today per transaction to make sure that they make up for the $218,750 that they're missing out on from the mining subsidy. That's what it means. So if the market is not willing to accept $52 extra per transaction on average, the only other option that they have then is to pump up the price of BTC, hopefully double it, that way, they can make up for the $218,750 that they are missing out on. Miners form the backbone of the Bitcoin ecosystem, 
but the halving places them in a precarious situation because to maintain their profitability, the price of BTC must soar, assuming other conditions stay constant. And failing a sufficient price rise, miners will begin to bleed cash. They will struggle to meet their hefty operational expenses, and this can lead them to stop their mining activities. And continued strain could lead to an exodus of miners, and their dwindling numbers will arrive to a critical point until the last miner stops operations. And such a scenario will pose a dire existential crisis for the Bitcoin network, as it would be left with nobody to validate and process transactions, and it could effectively die. Now, we're going to talk about why pumping the price of BTC is so important for its survival and why it is being heavily promoted. Recently, many CEOs and financial experts known for their money advice have been telling people to buy BTC, and this reveals a hidden truth. BTC needs a big jump in its price to stay afloat. But it is like taking a gamble with people's trust and money. This last-ditch effort reveals BTC's fragile foundation and its reliance on speculative hype and excitement rather than on real utility. And this is why I think BTC has an unsustainable strategy. Satoshi Nakamoto envisioned Bitcoin mining transitioning towards earnings from transaction fees as the mining subsidy decreased. And this vision depended on processing a large volume of transactions, which made it necessary that blocks of Bitcoin needed to be big. However, the people behind BTC have failed to scale Bitcoin and kept its block size so small that it can only process seven transactions per second. And this rate is far from enough for sustaining the costly mining operations incurred by miners. The decision to keep the block size small, driven by Bitcoin developers and their investors, has trapped BTC in a seemingly hopeless position with very few alternatives. And BTC's strategy in the face of this halving is alarmingly myopic, but quite understandable because it is the only option they've got. They have to pump up the price at any cost. But this strategy will put investors and the public at risk, especially those who are enticed by the prospect of fast wealth, often without a clear understanding of the halving's inherent dangers. In stark contrast to BTC, BSV has embraced Satoshi Nakamoto's original blueprint for Bitcoin scalability and the transitioning towards sustainable mining practices. Recognizing that diminishing mining subsidy necessitates a system where miners can profit from handling vast quantities of transactions, BSV effectively removed block size limits allowing for the accommodation of data from millions of transactions. This adjustment marks a significant departure from BTC's strategy of only seven transactions per second. BSV is now capable of processing up to 100,000 transactions per second, and there are further ambitions on the horizon with the Terranode project, which aims to increase this capacity to 1 million transactions per second by the year's end. And this vision of large blocks is not just about volume, but about inclusivity and affordability, ensuring that the blockchain remains low cost and accessible while enabling miners to sustain their operations through transaction fees. This leap in scalability positions BSV as a formidable platform capable of meeting global demands for data and payment processing 
at minimal costs. By prioritizing transaction volume over block size limitations, BSV secures a future where minor revenue is stable and the network's growth and adoption are unhindered. With a steadfast commitment to Satoshi's vision, BSV sets its sights on utility and practicality, steering clear of the speculative forces that shadow BTC. We have to look beyond the hype. The halving event looming on the horizon isn't an occasion for jubilation, but a pivotal moment for sober contemplation. BTC finds itself in a perilous situation, necessitating an urgent inflation of its price, which is a gambit that places the economic security of many at risk, who are seduced by the lure of unfounded promises. This desperate strategy is like building on quicksand, and it highlights the unsustainable trajectory of BTC. Conversely, BSV stands as a beacon of stability, championing Satoshi Nakamoto's original tenets of efficiency, scalability, and real-world applicability. As blockchain continues to mature, it becomes crucial for investors, users, and miners to scrutinize the underpinnings of their investments critically. Choosing BSV is to endorse a sustainable form of digital cash system. It's faithful to the inventor's vision and equipped to withstand the tests of time and market dynamics. So in conclusion, the halving highlights a stark contrast in the trajectories of BTC and BSV. BTC finds itself embroiled in hazardous and desperate economic strategies to stay afloat by appealing to the public for no other reason than to pump up the price. BSV, on the other hand, charts a course towards enduring viability and significance. This juncture calls for a reassessment of our aspirations for digital cash and data system advocating a move toward systems that emphasize practicality, stability, and broad accessibility. And in steering through these choppy seas, our choices should veer away from the catastrophic aftermaths of ruin seen in the wake of bursting market bubbles. And instead, let's guide ourselves towards a horizon where Bitcoin fulfills and delivers its promise to everyone. <laughs>